Today we're having a look at pinholes in copper pipe and the various ways of fixing them. What I've done, I've made myself a nice little jig up just down here, a little pack of box. Uh, I've used some absolutely glorious new flux that I've bought. I used to use Everflux but you know my lungs started to come out of my mouth. I used to use Laco flux but every time I got that trapped inside the smallest cut ever I wanted to basically throw myself off the Golden Gate Bridge. But now I'm using Powerflow flux uh, and uh, yeah it's pretty good, I really really like it. So so, so basically what we've done, we've created a small little header tank that runs down to a little lever valve so we can control this little experiment we're going to do and then we've got a 15mm to 22mm reducer going onto a straight coupling, a load of 22mm pipe with a bung at the end. I'm just going to turn the water on for you now so you know that it's actually real. So real. And there we go, so we're pretty much ready to drill a couple of very, very small holes that are going to replicate the pinholes that you can get on copper pipe. So as you can see, we've got a really small bit here that's going to be drilled into our pipe and recreate our pinholes. Oh, look at that, we've got weebies. We're going to have one at the side. Oh, I'm getting soaked here. Right, so look at that. We've got water coming out everywhere. So, number one, when you turn up, so like, what am I going to do? First things first, try and find out where you can turn the water off. Just like that. So now the water is off. We've got our little tank up here, like I said, feeding. We can easily turn the water back on just like that. Off, on, off. Before we look into that, let's figure out why is it that there's pinholes in this pipe in the first place. Now, usually you'd find that it's flux in the pipe work from when an apprentice years ago put too much flux in and it was from the days before water soluble flux and it's basically got caught in the pipe somewhere and over the last 30 years or whatever it's basically bored its way through the pipe and basically start getting these little pinholes. If that's the reason you've got to start worrying about the pipe work in the rest of the house, you've got to start thinking you know I'll fix this pinhole now but I might be back here in six months replacing the whole bit of pipe. So first up we're going to do the oh my god there's a pinhole I haven't got any time it's five o'clock on a Friday night I need to get this fixed so I can pop back on Monday and actually sort it out for them properly. So this is the quick fix. What you're going to do is you get yourself a little bit of rubber I mean it could be anything anything rubber anything you can just press over the hole like so and then all you need to do is basically grab yourself a Jubilee clip there's plenty of plumbers who've done this before trying to buy themselves some time or if they're on another job and they've just popped out I mean often you'll be on a job someone will run over the road to where you are and say can you come to my house quickly I've got a pinhole it's going everywhere and this is the way you'll get over it until you can pop over there later on and actually affect a proper repair so you're gonna basically pop this little bit of rubber over here and then you're gonna get your Jubilee clip like so you're gonna close your Jubilee clip up and then you're gonna do that up nice and tight but you'll notice straight away if you turn the water back on we've still got our two other pinholes but the one we've done so far is now fixed temporarily. So now if we turn the water back on you should see no leaks. So that's pinhole pipe repair number one done. Now let's have a quick look at pinhole pipe repair number two. Again, like I've just said, the first thing we've got to do is turn the water off. I just want to reiterate that the fix we've just done here is going to work pretty well on like a gravity fed system. If you're on mains pressure, just cross your fingers, okay? Because this isn't a proper fix. This is just get you down to the supplier's fix. So we've got our next pinhole just here. I'm going to show you how to fix that now. What we need to do is you need to find out exactly where the pinhole is. Now, this is only really going to work if you've got pipe work that isn't so completely ruined and knackered on the inside that it's going to fall apart when you put a pipe slice on it or a cutter. Now most plumbers are going to have a pipe slice like this so they're going to be able to cut this really easily but the rest of you are probably going to be using a hacksaw. What you want to do is this, you want to get your pipe slice blade if you can see it or the blade of your hacksaw directly over the pinhole that you've actually got and that's leaking. So you can see my blade just here so I'm just going to swap that, pop that right over this like so. I'm just going to cut this pipe now. And this fix is only going to work if you have a bit of spring in the pipe and unfortunately you're probably not going to know that until you've actually cut through it or sometimes you can move it from side to side and if the pipe does move a bit then you're probably going to have enough play to be able to slip a fitting on. So there we go we've made our cut as you can see we've got quite a bit of water coming out so obviously get yourself a towel or, or a bucket so this is kind of the next level up you can either use a straight push fit fitting but they need so much spring i don't tend to recommend these so what we're going to do is get ourselves a compression fitting uh, we're working on 22 millimeter pipe here so we're going to get 22 mil compression fitting and what we're going to do is we're going to spring this pipe apart it's going to be really difficult sometimes spring it apart and you're going to slip the nut and the olive over one piece 
and you're gonna slip the nut and the olive over another. And then you should have, if you have enough room, sometimes you have to wiggle this out this way and then you can push everything back together and tighten this up with a set of grips. Once we've got all that made up, just give that a little nip up. Right, we should be able to turn the water back on again and find out that now we've only got one leak, this little one left down here. <laughs> so now we've fixed two of the leaks and now we're going to move on to the last and the most advanced way of trying to fix a pinhole leak. So now we're going to use the same method we did for cutting earlier on. We're going to find out exactly where the pinhole is and either get our pipe size blade or our hacksaw blade directly over it and do our cut again. It's a very similar way of fixing the same problem but not using the compression fitting or obviously Jubilee clip and bits and bobs like that. This time we're going to create a really permanent fix and use a soldered fitting. Now it's very important when you're soldering that the pipe is completely empty of water otherwise it will not solder and also the, the pipe itself is very very clean otherwise it won't solder so we're going to let all our water out here this is going to be the difficult bit for any job I mean we've got it nice and easy here we can see straight away that we've got only this little bit of pipe but for demonstration purposes it's going to be fine so the next thing we want to do we've cut exactly where we wanted to look at that that's how bad my aiming is at the moment I pretty much just missed the pinhole nearly but it should still be fine so first up we're going to do our very best to clean the pipe you know I haven't got much movement here but let's get that pipe as clean as possible we only want to be doing this once now sometimes obviously so you're not going to have the luxury of being able to get one of these tools around here so you're going to need to use a little bit of emery cloth use your brain sometimes you might even have to come down to the poor man's way of cleaning a bit of pipe and just propping some flux over it and then getting your burner on there and just burning off the flux and giving it a rub down with the flannel next thing most important that no one ever does is clean out your fitting clean out the inside of your fitting i'm kind of cheating today i'm actually going to use a capillary fitting uh, or a yorkshire fitting but you're going to see me do something with it okay that every plumber does every plumber who buys a yorkshire fitting runs a little bit of solder in as well it's just just how it is you're just never happy never happy but give me a plumber who's happy though eh? i've looked high and low for my last flux brush and i can't seem to find it so i'm just going to run a little bit of flux on the pipe right here put that on there like that and then this one here is not going to be as easy to do so just a little bit of a sludge like that look at that lovely <laughs> even though most flux now is soluble you don't want to leave any flux in the pipe put this on here give that a twist they're now recommending as well that you don't actually use flux on the inside of a fitting for the same reason so then, now we're going to just get on here, give this a solder up. I mean, you guys, you guys out there who are trying to fix a pinhole, you DIYers, you're only ever going to attempt this if you know how to solder. So I'm not going to give you a close up on how to do it. We have done a video on how to solder copper fittings. So go to our channel, search for it there, and you'll find a full guide and full close ups on how to do it. Boom, we got fire. So there we go. Oh, why not have a close up? As you can see, I always like to heat up from the bottom and then run my solder in from the top. The reason I do that is because I know then, if it's hot enough for it to run all the way around, it's actually going to run around the whole fitting. Look at that little rub. There we go, look at that. This flux is so good for this sort of thing. It's really, really good. Oh, let's get rid of them. We don't... Ow! Oh, oh. Give the pipe a clean down. As you can see, I've burnt the table a bit. Lovely job. But now we should be able to see that we've fixed all the leaks. So now that we've got our solder fitting done up, we've got our compression fitting done, and we've got our rudimental quick fix done and everything's okay, the water is, as you can see, already on. And if you want me to prove it, I'll pull the end off here again. Look, there we go, water's coming out. So there you go, full proof that these are the three main methods that people use to fix pinhole pipe leaks. I'd always recommend though that if you've got that problem, especially if you've got a few pinholes on the way, uh, it's a good idea that you replace the whole pipe length. So there you go, I hope you found today's video helpful and informative. If you've got any questions or that you think there's something we could have done better or that we've missed something out, please let us know in the comments section below. As ever, click on the share button and all that sort of stuff. Please do subscribe to us and also follow us on Facebook and Twitter. We post loads of photos of the plumbing disasters and catastrophes every week. And it's a great little place to be. And if you send in a great photo, you could win a sticker or a van magnet or anything like that. Also, please visit our website if you need any more help or any more information there. Anyway, until our next video, which shouldn't be very long, remember everyone to hold tight. Plumberparts.co.uk Honest reviews and advice.